We back here again. <laughs> you probably asking, where is here? Well, here is Charlotte, North Carolina, where I am born, raised. You understand what raised me? You know what I'm saying? East Side Charlotte, <laughs> to be exact. Um, and this, this, this is crazy. Cause you understand, I've only been doing stand up for about six years, almost seven. And I've been traveling all across, you know what I'm saying, getting, getting, I was able to open for big names early on, get some great opportunities. I uh, ended up quitting my job, <laughs> my full-time job, to start telling jokes full-time. Of course, COVID hit, and that had to give me another job. <laughs> Didn't work that one too long, because I knew what I was born to do, okay? So I quit that job, and I said, comedy gotta work out. <laughs> and uh, this is a full circle moment, because um, last year, you know, August 28th, 2022, was my first time headlining a comedy club, and which was the best part, it was my home club, okay, here in Charlotte. And so it's a full circle moment because this year, on my birthday, September 10th, uh, we recorded, you know what I'm saying? Uh, to, Cause a lot of y'all know me now for just a character that I do in the window, but y'all don't know me as Christian Johnson on stage. So this is where y'all gonna get to know me, okay? Uh, and this is so dope because last year, I only had about 10,000 followers on Instagram. Now nothing to, you know, frown about, but, it's so crazy now because just in a year later, we had 1.1 million followers on Instagram. So this is a very dope moment. Uh, my thank you to everybody. I really appreciate you guys for basically changing my life. Uh, so thank you for your support and watching. And uh, get ready. Get ready. Woo! We got people sitting by the bathroom. That's how much... <laughs> Y'all all on top of each other in here. Appreciate y'all. Thank y'all so much. This means a lot, man. Make some noise for everybody that you saw tonight. Make some noise for everybody that you saw. Thank y'all. <laughs> all right. Um, now, what this set is, this is my introduction to a lot of y'all. Because uh, who all seen me do stand-up before? <laughs> See what I mean? So this is my introduction to y'all. Because y'all just know, some of y'all, a lot of y'all just know me as an old man in the window. Y'all don't know me. <laughs> so... so Y'all gonna get to know me tonight, and I'm gonna get to know y'all. So throughout the set, I'm gonna ask questions to get to know everybody, okay? So first off, first question off the top is uh, who all caught COVID? Who all caught COVID? Who all caught it? I see a lot, I see a lot more black hands than white hands. I don't like that. Wait a minute. <laughs> Not because I caught COVID too, but I caught it late. Like I caught COVID when nobody's praying for you no more. That's when I caught it. <laughs> Cause you know, when you first said you had it, when it first came out, people treated you like you had AIDS or something. You know what I mean? They, they was all in the comment section like, we praying for you, you know? By the time I got it, I told my family, they was all, oh, you'll be all right. <laughs> no, 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 talk to Jesus for me too. What you talking about? You... <laughs> I don't know people probably like, Christian, you still talk about COVID? Yes, cause it was too scary and life changing of an event not to keep talking about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, for, it was too scary for too many reasons. First reason for me, it was scary because when it first came out, we started buying all the toilet paper and we still don't know why yet. We still don't know why. <laughs> like, I know I bought it because white people was buying it. So I was like, they're not about to leave me out. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm gonna survive too. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> and it was, a, you know, it was some misinformation that went out on the black side of Facebook. They said black people couldn't get COVID because the melanin in our skin and all that. So I was like, I'm gonna be all right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> But then somebody black got it. The first black person in the public eye was Idris Elba. He was the first one to get it. And I got mad. I said, dang, we black people, we can get it. Then I thought, I said, hold on. Idris, he from the UK. That's British black, they ain't the same thing. You know what I'm saying? I, <laughs> I like my chances, you know what I'm saying? And look, I know we all gotta die one day. We all gonna have to check out of here. I understand we got we got a day, you know, that gotta come and we gotta leave. But we saw losing legends, legends over the pandemic. You know, people that was near and dear to us, especially in the black community. Like we lost Cicely Tyson over the pandemic. You hear that the groans of the black people? See, she meant something to us. You know what I'm saying? One of the greatest actresses of our time. And now when she died, she died around a funny time. She died around like when the vaccine that first came out. So I don't know if she got the vaccine. That's what made her die. I don't know. But it just because the timing of when she died. That boy Donald Trump sounded smart. Because you remember what he said? Do Donald Trump said, people are dying that never died before. And I said, whoa. <laughs> Hold on. <You> know, <laughs> it's getting spooky out here. Wait a minute. Hold on. He, <laughs> he made me call my grandma. I said, hey, you, you all right? Because 
That boy Donnie prophesying. I don't like that. that little... <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> now, <laughs> I not love this man. Finally, you know, getting to be on tour and travel around, man. I get to kind of see what audience that I bring out. You know what I mean? Because when I'm on my phone, I just see the likes and the comments and stuff coming in. I don't get to see y'all beautiful face like I do now. I just see y'all small profile picture. And when I come out, I like to see what kind of audience. This is dope. If you look around, it's not just one type of people. It's not just black, it's not just white. It's a little bit of everybody. And I, I like that because my comment ain't got no color on it. I just like to make people laugh. You understand what I'm saying? So this is dope. Yeah, this is dope. But of course, over the pandemic, there was a lot of racial tension going on. You know, a lot of black versus white. Now, of course, it happened because of the sad tragedy of George Floyd. Now, of course, when that happened, there was a lot of riots and a lot of looting going on. And everybody wanted to be mad at the looters. But you got to understand something. Just when people that look just like you keep dying by the hands of police, that's your anger, your frustration coming out. You understand? So I'm not saying I agree with it. I just understand it. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't, I didn't condemn the looters. I actually kind of commended them because you got to be good at it. Because, <laughs> you know, looting is about what you can steal real quick. You know what I mean? Like a grab and go, you know? See me, I wouldn't be no good looter because, you know, I like Target clothes. They got nice stuff. You know what I mean? I'll I be in there looking for my size. You know what I'm talking about? Like, shooting through the shirts trying to find me a large. You know what I'm saying? Like, I even grabbed me in the social. Hey, do y'all got this? Because the Target app said y'all got it. I want to make sure. Because <laughs> I ain't trying to miss out. You understand what? <laughs> And I can't stand the media because the media tried to make it seem like it was just black people that are stealing. That ain't true now. White folk was out there too. The thing is, we still different. That's the thing. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know, black people, we're going straight for the electronics. You know what I'm saying? The TVs, iPhones, iPads, we backing up the truck. You understand what I'm saying? Now, white people, they was out there, but they were stealing stuff they could have just bought. Uh, <laughs> and I wish I was making this up. Nah, for real. I was scrolling on Facebook, okay, in the NBC News channel. They had a Facebook Live going, okay? They had a helicopter hovering over that Target. And it was all kind of folk running out of there with stuff. And I seen a white lady, she ran out the Target with a live, laugh, love sign. So... <laughs> Mackenzie, go to self-checkout. Don't... Because <laughs> you can't be risking your freedom over some decor. You can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and now look, it's been, before I start this next part, rest in peace to all the victims. I don't want to see them make light of a situation, but there's been a lot of mass shootings going on, you know, especially over the past couple of years, been a lot of mass shootings going on. And I remember not too long ago, vividly, I remember because it was 2019, it was one, one week where it was like three mass shootings back to back, okay? It was like one after another, boom, boom, boom. And they all had something, in, all the three shooters that week, they had something in common, like that we just kind of looked back. Buy too fast for me, you know what I mean? For my safety, you know what I mean? Like it, was, and it was three of them, it was like a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It was one after another, boom, boom, boom. It was like episodes of Friends on Nick at Night, you know what I mean? <laughs> Black people. It was, like episodes, <laughs> it was like episodes of Good Times on TV One, you know what I'm saying? I just I wanna make sure. <laughs> but the three shooters, they had something in common, like I said. Were they white? Yes. And were they racist? Yes. But they also had something in common that we looked over. Like I said, all the shooters that week were wearing glasses. Now, I didn't get to scan the room myself, but if you white and you got glasses, please raise your hand. <laughs> Are we safe tonight, sir? Because, okay, because suspicious. <laughs> nah, because a white man with glasses, not the new black man with a ski mask on for me. You know what I'm saying? It's equally as scary. And I don't even know if I live in a safe neighborhood because I live by a lens crafter, so you do whatever you want you will. <laughs> Could you imagine, you know what I'm saying, if you was in a store or whatever and a shooter came on your aisle? Like, how would you handle it or de-escalate the situation? Like, what would you do? No, you ain't got nothing on it? I don't like that answer. I don't like that. What would you do? If the, you gonna run? I like that. I like that. I don't know how far you're going to get, but I like it. I do. I do like, oh, zigzag. Oh, that, see, okay, there we go. See? see, now me, I probably would start singing a song. You know what I mean? Hold on before you judge. Hold on. Because this song in particular, white people love it. You know what I'm saying? When they hear this song, it changed their whole mood. You know what I mean? Like, when they hear it, they start hugging. They start kissing. It's, it's dope. It's, it's a dope moment. I've been to a lot of wedding receptions. I've seen it work. So I can imagine him come on my aisle, toss him, put your hands up. I'm like, no, 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 please don't shoot me. Just a small town girl. 
living in the love. <laughs> <laughs> and if that one don't work, I'm gonna do the other favorite. Sweet Caroline. Look how happy the white people are in the room. Just look. All I see is teeth from all the white people. Everybody's. <laughs> Some of these ain't jokes. That's all I'm saying. So. Since you didn't know what to do, use that, sir. Go ahead and <laughs> get your Apple Music and download them songs, all right? <laughs> and now, um, I'm going to say this. It's, it's hard to be black. It's hard to be black, uh, but not for reasons that you think. It's hard to be black because, of course, over the pandemic, you know, black people were really trying to unite, be arm in arm with each other. You know what I'm saying? And if somebody did something against the black community, who's supposed to just stop supporting them and forget all the good they done did in the community? Like they said, Papa John said the N-word. And we were supposed to just stop eating Papa John's. <laughs> Wait a minute, Papa John's delicious. Wait a minute. <laughs> who heard the audio? I just need to know who heard it. Because did y'all hear it? Charlotte, did we hear it? Because I know I didn't hear it. I just saw the, I saw the headline. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, look, before I cancel them, I need to hear it because I got Papa John's rewards. So I'm not about to just <laughs> forfeit my rewards because he allegedly said it. Now, nah, play the tape. Cue it up and press play for me, I got to hit that, you understand? Because <laughs> he might have said it in a good way, we don't know. He might have said it in a good way. He might have he said it in a way that was uplifting the black people, we don't know. <laughs> he could have had a board meeting for black people at a round table, you know what I'm saying? He sat all them black people down at the round table and was like, you know what y'all, I got to do something for y'all. How about this? Better ingredients, better pizza for niggas. What? <laughs> You know what, Mr. Papa John? That ain't that bad. That's all right, Mr. Papa John. I'm... <laughs> nah, think about it, because imagine, just take, take it around me mentally. Imagine some more companies saying it in a good way. Imagine some more companies saying it uplifting us. You know what I'm saying? Like during Black History Month, it was certain commercials that catered to us during our month. Imagine that. Like, just take it around me mentally. Hold on, Black people, don't leave me. Wait a minute. <laughs> Imagine if you heard this on the radio or seen this on the TV. Nationwide is on nigger side. You like, that, that's all right there. I'm like, I got to get me some of that. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to cancel my state farm. You understand what I'm saying? I'm, <laughs> okay, some of y'all super black. Wait a minute. Hold on. I see some of y'all black faces. Wait a minute. I got one more and I'm going to let it go. One more. See if y'all going to get on board. Hold on. One more. Imagine this. If you've seen this on the TV, you heard this on the radio during Black History. <laughs> Call J.G. Wentworth. We giving niggas cash now. We giving niggas cash. <laughs> you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm calling. I'm calling. I am calling. <laughs> hey, I heard y'all giving niggas cash now. I'm going to need some of that. <laughs> 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 you gonna call too? You gonna call? I'm calling. <laughs> now again, I said throughout the set, I'm gonna ask questions, you know what I'm saying, to get to know everybody. So Charlotte, are we an employer crowd? We got jobs? We got jobs in the room? We got jobs. <laughs> that wasn't everybody. Okay. That wasn't everybody. Now are we good employees at the job at all? Are we good employees at our job? That was like eight people. Okay. We gotta <laughs> got to get ourselves together, you know what I mean? Because if you're not a good employee, like, I'm blessed to do this on the stage and make people laugh because I'm not a good employee. And one thing about when you're not a good employee is uh, they will fire you. They will fire you. They will fire you, you know what I mean? And it, ha it happened in a scary way, too. Because let me see, you ever heard about somebody getting fired at your job for something that you do, too? <laughs> Let that marinate a second. That same thing you heard they got fired for, you know you do it, too? <laughs> scary, you understand? <laughs> Having it one time, I was like, where James? I ain't seen him all week. I was like, you ever heard? James got fired. I'm like, ain't he fired James? What did he do? He was late. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> Are they going to come get the rest of us? You know what I'm saying? Because I was late this morning. You understand what I'm saying? Because, <laughs> look, I've been, black, I've been black since 91. You know what I'm saying? I've been black. 32 years I've been black. And I know my people. Like, once, my people, we the kind of people, like, once we late, we're not going to be hungry and late. You understand what I'm saying? You ever... 
You, like, you ever walked in your job with the Bojangles bag? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> right by the supervisor, like, good, good morning, y'all. How y'all doing? You know? <laughs> My supervisor was like, Christian, do you know what time it is? I'm like, no. But I knew what time it was. Mm. It was bow time. You understand what I'm saying? It was... <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a good employee. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Like, I do stuff like wake up on time to call out. That's the kind of stuff I would do. You know what I'm saying? Like, set me an alarm and go to bed early. You know what I'm saying? Like, let me get some rest. I got a big day for me tomorrow. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> And since, look, since I'm not a good employee, don't ask me to do good employee stuff, you know? Like, don't ask me to do no overtime, because you barely got regular time out of me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> See, because I, I had an African supervisor, and he took it upon himself to ask one day, could I stay late? He said, hey, he called me right before I was about to clock out. He said, hey, uh, Christian, do you think you can stay to about uh, six o'clock, maybe? Uh, there are some things that we did not finish. So I wanted to talk to him in a way he could understand me. <laughs> I look at him, I said, no, I cannot stay. <laughs> Whatever we did not finish, it's none of my business. You understand? I, <laughs> I'm gone. You understand what I'm saying? I'm <laughs> Wait, ain't no Africans in here. Is there any Africans in here? So I just don't want nobody following me to my car. I don't want nobody to do that. About. I would like for you to say that joke again. I don't want. <laughs> just don't want them issues. <laughs> and I need jobs to understand this as black people, how we operate, how we do things. You know, like jobs like to say, jobs got this thing. Some, some jobs, not all of them, but some jobs be like no cell phone, like a no cell phone policy. You know, black people, we don't respect that. You know what I'm saying? Just, <laughs> jobs got to understand, and, like, unless you pay for this phone, you ain't got no say so about the phone. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, until you start chipping in on this T Mobile, then you get a say so. But until then, it's my phone, okay? No cell phone policy. What black people do? We bring the phone anyway. But we a special kind of people. We different. We take stuff to another level. We bring the charger, too. You understand? We'll, <laughs> we'll leave ass. You got somewhere I can plug this up at, man? You got somewhere I can plug this up at? Because I'm about to get on Facebook. You understand? <laughs> understand us as black people, man. Because it's a misconception out here by black people I don't like. And the misconception is, like, black people, we don't work. Like, we welfare people, we lazy, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's not true at all. It's the furthest from thing from the truth. Because we some, black people, we some hardworking people, you know what I mean? We will work, you know what I mean? We, we some hardworking people, you know what I mean? Hardworking, man. We're going to be late, but we're going to work, you know what I mean? We might leave early, but we're going to work, you know what I'm saying? While, while I'm clocked in, I'll do the job, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> some hardworking people, man. Black people, we always trying to look for better opportunities, you know, ch chasing the bag, always looking for better. Like, black people, we're the kind of people that will look for a job while on the job. You understand what I'm saying? You ever, you ever been on Indeed at work? You understand what I'm saying? You ever printed your resume out at work? You know, like, they got the good paper here. You understand what I'm saying? I, <laughs> and don't play with black people. We go to an interview on lunch. You understand what I'm saying? We will. Look, <laughs> look at the white people. You can do that? Yes. Yes, you can. You... <laughs> lunch is time off the clock. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> tell y'all about my I'm gonna tell y'all about myself, man. I started my stand-up career back in 2017, right here on this very stage, man. Back in back in 2017. Yeah, yeah. Um and things things were going well, you know what I mean? Like things were going real well. I was getting a lot of good opportunities early, uh being able to travel a little bit. And things were going so well that about two years in. I was having thoughts, like, you know what? Maybe I should quit my job and do this full time. So I went home and I talked to my wife about it. And she said, hold on, nigga. Uh, <laughs> you funny, but you ain't that funny. You know what I'm saying? You, you know how y'all do. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> you clock in and tell them jokes. You understand what I'm saying? That's the... <laughs> Not, she believed in me, she was just scared. You know what I'm saying? It's a scary thought to leave your, your guaranteed money for some, you know, for some, so she wasn't sure, but eventually she came around, man, and she was like, you know what, baby, if that's what you feel like you, you know, led to do or whatever, man, I'm gonna stand by you and support you, man. And thank God it worked out. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, truly, it was uh, truly a blessing, man, because uh, the rest of the year, because uh, I quit in like May, so like for the rest of the year, I was able to pay bills with comedy money, things were going well. 
But of course, y'all know 2020 came. Pandemic. And, can and shows getting canceled left and right. You know what I mean? So I had to go get me another job. And that's when I started working at uh, Amazon. Has anybody worked for Amazon in here? No? You still work there now? Oh, okay. We How about... Cause we got to update your resume tonight. You understand what I'm saying? Cause <laughs> that's one of the worst jobs I ever had. You understand? And I should have known it was gonna be a bad job because the hiring process. Cause look, anytime you get hired on the spot, don't work there. Don't you do it. <laughs> that, is, that is a red flag. Don't you do it. <laughs> Hire on the spot, mm-mm, don't do it. I should have known it was gonna be a bad job. Cause I fill out the application and they send me an email to come on in. So I'm thinking I'm coming in for an interview. You know what I'm saying? So I, I put on my good stuff. You know what I mean? Sl slacks and church shoes. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> and so I get there, I pull up the Amazon and I walk through the front door and it's a black lady there. And she said, yeah, go to the right to take your picture. <laughs> picture for what? <laughs> She's like, for your badge. I said, wait, I got the job? Wait a minute, hold on. Y'all don't want to ask me nothing? Y'all don't want me to pee in a cup or nothing? You sure? You know what I mean? And you want me to start today? Ma'am, this is a warehouse. I got on church shoes. I can't start today. I might come by tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so with that hiring process, you work with any and everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't know what folk be into. Like, I found out my coworker was doing some stuff. I didn't want to know him like that, you know? Because one day he was all in his nose, like, ugh. ugh. I'm like, hmm, what's wrong with you? <laughs> He like, Dad, I just got this, uh, this stuffy dose. And I said, mm, well, you need to get some of that music because I heard that work. <laughs> and he said, nah, I got some cocaine I've been doing. Whoa, whoa, you got, you got what? <laughs> He's like, yeah, cocaine, it make the nasal drain. I said, wait, is that a slogan? Wait a minute, hold on, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm like, and you gonna do it right now? It's 7.30 in the morning. You ain't had breakfast yet, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't never, do, never did no cocaine, but I don't think you're supposed to do it on an empty stomach. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> eat first. <laughs> <Then>. <laughs> I feel like cocaine, like coffee. You know what I'm saying? You got the, your stomach gonna be bubbling. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just. <laughs> like, has anybody ever seen somebody, has anybody ever seen somebody do cocaine in front of them before? Has anybody seen that? What was that? It sounded like somebody on it right now. What was that? That, that wasn't even words. Somebody said, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, because, you know, I look, I, we was having a good, you know, one of my, it threw me off because, you know, one of my homeboys had it. Not Juwan, but one of my homeboys had it. <laughs> and it threw me off because I was with him all day. So I was like, when did you get this? You know what I'm saying? I've been with you all day. And look. I'm down for fun. I'm just not down for some, let's pull out some cocaine fun. You understand? I got to draw a line somewhere. You know what I mean? And so we having to kick back, having a little good time, you know what I'm saying? Getting it in, you know, party or whatever. And then he was like, all right, y'all, we finna turn this party up. And I was like, with what? You know? <laughs> and after he said that he pulled out like a mini to-go bag of cocaine, if you will, like a little small bag, a little to-go bag. And <laughs> I've seen a lot of movies, a lot of TV, you know what I'm saying? I know when folk about to do a little cocaine, they kind of pour it out the bag, get a little credit card or a blade to make a line because they finna do a bump. You know what I'm saying? I've seen that process. <laughs> he had a different process though. After he pulled out the mini bag of cocaine, he pulled out like a mini spoon that go with it. I don't know. He put out the mini, you know how you sample some ice cream like a Dippin' Dots? <laughs> he had the Dippin' Dots spoon. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> and he opened up that bag and he scooped it and hit it real quick and I said, whoa, where you get the spoon from? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and look, I'm not gonna do no cocaine, but if I was, I don't want it scoop. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't scoop my coke. You know what I'm saying? I don't think that's the right measurement for that. You <laughs> don't scoop my coke. <laughs> don't scoop it now. Don't you scoop it? <laughs> <laughs> Now, we got any dog parents in here? Dog people? Dog parents? Dog people? Dog people. Okay. I tried to be like y'all. I did. I did. I tried to be like y'all, man. It didn't last long, though, because I didn't realize dogs are expensive. Dogs are really, really expensive. You know what I'm saying? They don't really tell you about all that. You know what I mean? They're too expensive. And, uh, you know, I grew up black in the 90s, and we didn't put no insurance on no dog. We did not. 
Black in the 90s, we didn't put no insurance on no dog. You understand? Like, whatever was wrong with your dog, that's just what was wrong with him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, folk would come by like, why your dog limping? It's like, mind your business, okay? He, he our dog, not yours. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, you know what I mean? I try, so I kind of, you know, did what I grew up with. I ain't put no insurance on my dog. But one day, man, my dog, he ended up getting sick. He had some real, real bad stomach bug. And I wanted to change my ways. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to be different from what I grew up with. I wanted to be a good dog dad. So I gathered him up and put him in the car and I said, let's go on to the vet. Zoom down there. And now I got him there in the nick of time. They fixed him up. You know what I mean? But after they fixed him, they proceeded to hand me the bill. <laughs> and that bill was $700. <laughs> so I looked at the vet. I said, oh my goodness. Whew. Thank God that you saved your dog. Uh, <laughs> he ain't mine no more. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is the better home for him. You know what I'm saying? I'll bring his Cajun toys by later. You know what I'm talking about? 700, who got just 700? I ain't got that. No, nah, no, nah. they talk about you can put it on credit. My real credit ain't good. Why you think I'm gonna put credit on the dog? Nah. <laughs> it's like I said, we didn't put no insurance. We didn't have no insurance on the dog. We had a dog growing up. And you know what I mean? My dog, he got treated just like me and my brothers. You know what I'm saying? And not in a good way. You know what I mean? Like however, however my dog got disciplined, that's how she disciplined us and vice versa. You know what I'm saying? It's the same treatment across the board, you know? And I remember one day my dog was running in the house. You know what I'm saying? Zoom, zoom, zoom. Now, of course, black people, we don't train our dog. We just yell at them till they understand. You know what I'm saying? That's just, stop running in my house. Like, that's all, that's all we bring to the table. <laughs> so my mom yelling for him to stop. He don't listen. You know what I'm saying? He's still running. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Next thing you know, all we hear is boom. <laughs> boom. <laughs> boom. He had to ran into the table and got hurt. You know what I'm saying? My mom said, hush, I know it hurts. Stop, because I told you to stop. Hush. <laughs> Do you think she got him in the van and took him to the vet? I told you, he got treated like us. The same discipline. She poured some ginger ale in his bowl and said, you drink that and you go lay down. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, white people. Ginger ale is medicine to black people. It's how we... It's how we heal ourselves. <laughs> Inclusive comedy is what I do, you know what I'm saying? I want to make sure. <laughs> how you doing, sir, with the big, you a big guy too, man, dang. <laughs> yeah, you, you know who I'm talking to, you flex. He said, you talking to me, you talking. <laughs> you know I'm talking to you. Now, is that your lady beside you? Okay, oh, you got a strong voice too. Okay, you <laughs> you do neck workout. Okay, I see. <laughs> All right, now how long y'all y'all married? Y'all how long y'all been married? One year. Oh, new love. Okay, hey, okay. Now where'd y'all meet? At work. Okay, what job? Oh shoot. I see why you got muscles now. Okay. All right. Do you work at the jail here? Oh, y'all retired. Oh, oh y'all got money. Give me some money after the show. Give me some money after the show. I know y'all got it. And what was y'all first date? Applebee's? I like you, sir. I like that. Now, that's what I'm talking about. Now, that's how I like that energy. Because you got to see, you know, because let me see. Did, you, did she order what you wanted her to get? You know what I'm saying? Like, she order what you... Like, did she order, like, you know, within your budget? Because, you know, first date, you can't just be splurging. You know what I'm saying? Did what y'all do? Did she order, like, you know? See, because I didn't know if I was going to get with my wife, because, you know, I took her for happy hour. <laughs> and, you know, when you go for happy hour, happy hour, it meant you was on the front. <laughs> but as we sitting down, I hear pages turning. <laughs> like, I felt the menu win. You know what I'm saying? The menu win. So I'm asking, I'm like, hey, so what you plan on getting? She said, yeah, I want the stuffed chicken breast. Hold on, wait, that don't sound like, you know, happy hour stuff is like a one, two, you know what I'm saying? Like potato skins, you know what I'm saying? Like spinach dip, you know what I'm saying? Stuffed chicken breast, that sounds too much, that's too much. I didn't come for all that, Lord have mercy. <laughs> well, no, I just took, I took the long way around, you know what I'm saying? I like to get to know the audience or whatever, but I took the long way to say, I am married gang, you know what I'm saying? Me and my wife got married back in 2020. You know what I'm saying? My wife got married. Marriage. 
Marriage is cool, man. I love being married, man, my baby. Uh, who been married a long time throughout the years? Who been married a long time throughout the years? Woo! And it, it sounded like 49, too. It sounded like it. It sounded like you stood up on the cane at 49. Okay, can, can anybody be 49? 52? 52? Oh, shoot. <laughs> Woo! Where, where your husband at? He's at home? I can tell y'all been leaving. Y'all been married a long time. Y'all just start leaving each other at the house. <laughs> Earl, I'm going out. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, boy, that's, <laughs> that's how it happened. <laughs> anybody be, what, how long was that? 52. Can anybody be 52? That's together, like both of y'all here? Okay, we're gonna talk to 49, just cause he here, and I need to talk to him. <laughs> cause sir, stuff, some stuff come with marriage, that you should've told me about, and I'm mad at you, okay? You should've told me that. <laughs> what come with it? Now, I don't treat, treat my performance as just a performance, you know what I'm saying? I usually just, you know, treat it as I'm just talking in front of family members, so we all family in the room tonight, okay? So I'm gonna ask you a question in front of the family, and I know you're gonna answer truthfully, right? That's what I'm talking about, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> the vocals is just. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Now, 49 years, that's a long time, man. That's a long time. See, some things, before you get married, you gotta be ready for some things. It comes with some things you gotta be ready for, that you gotta start, make sure you ask the right question about some stuff and get to know your partner. You understand what I'm saying? Because I'm pretty sure, man, 49 years, you'll do like whatever it takes to protect your wife, right? Like, if somebody come here right now, like, everybody get on the ground. You be like, ah, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to protect her, right? right. Yeah, see, I ain't there yet. I ain't there. <laughs> No, because my wife, okay, because you know, you get forced to do like a protective role when you were a husband. You like a hero now. I don't like that. You know what I'm saying? It's too much pressure. It's too much pressure. See, my wife, she got this thing and she hears something in the middle of the night. She want me to go check it out. I'm like, no, 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 baby. It scared you. Uh, <laughs> it scared me too. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Cause she won she woke up one night all in the pan, like, oh my God, baby, what was that sound? I said, well, it sounded like you heard it first. How about you go see? <laughs> Because <laughs> I got on the wife beater and draws. What you want me to do? You understand? This ain't, this ain't fight crime attire. You understand what I'm saying? Let's wait on the police together is what I'm saying. Because <laughs> look, we don't live in the hood, but some hood stuff go down. Like not too long ago, we heard gunshots outside our bedroom window. Now that's your reaction. My wife, she sat up in the bed. I said, you better lay back down before you get shot. <laughs> you supposed to stay low. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> like who who engaged thinking about getting married? Anybody like that? That wasn't a confident woo. Okay. <laughs> Just make sure you ask the right question. That's all I'm saying. Make sure you ask the right questions. Cause you know, you know, like learn what a few mean. Learn, learn like learn what a few mean to your lady before you get married. Cause y'all may have two different definitions, like me and my wife. Okay, come tell y'all a story. Now you know it's men, all right? Like, we had to drive through with my wife. Now you know it's men. We wanna, we were hungry, we want the combo. I want a sandwich, fry, and the drink. Now I asked my baby in the passenger seat. I said, hey baby, what would you like? She said, I'll just have a six piece nugget. I said, you don't want any fries? She said, no, I'll just have a few of yours. <laughs> Let's stop right there. <laughs> Let's get you a small fry, you know what I'm saying? Let's get you that. But she like, I may not finish it. I said, that's cool. How you just gonna help yourself to my medium? You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> now my wife, she quick a comeback. She was like, well, I helped myself to your medium last night. I said, don't you do that. Don't you dare. Don't you. The doctor said that's a popular size. Don't you do that. Don't you. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what the term is? Happy wife, happy life. You know what I'm saying? That term is out there. So I'm like, I guess we gonna share, all right? So we get to, we get to the next window. Now normally when they pass you the food, the driver's supposed to pass to the passenger. Nah, I kept it with me. <laughs> now, this is where I got upset, because remember, she asked for a few, but when I pulled the fries out, she reached to get hers where her whole hand, all her fingers and her wrist was involved. You know what I'm saying? So I snatched the fries, I said, oh, you only asked for a few. 
I said, a few fries will a few fingers. This is how you need to be grabbing. You need to, you need the baby shark fingers. You understand the, the do the do's You need the do the do's Uh-uh. Uncock your wrist. I don't like that. You know? <laughs> I'm petty like that. <laughs> and when we first started dating, I found out I was the less attractive one in our relationship. You know what I mean? Because a lot of y'all got beautiful ladies on your arm in here tonight. And uh, I'm pretty sure your family did what my family did when I introduced my wife. When I introduced my wife, there was a lot of additives and animation going on. You know what I mean? You know, big and me, because my wife is pretty. So I introduced her. I said, hey, y'all, it's my wife. You know what I'm saying? Well, this is my baby. They was like, oh, my gosh, Christian, okay. She's gorgeous. I see you, big dog. Okay. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot going on, because my wife is pretty. You know what I mean? It just wasn't the same energy when she introduced me to her family. <laughs> Cause she take me to the, you know, to the family, you know, cookout, you know. Hey, y'all, this is my man Christian. They was like, oh, hey. I'm waiting for the additives and the animation, you know what I'm saying? And it never came. I didn't like that, you know what I mean? Now, granted, look, I don't think I'm the finest thing walking, but I'm cute enough you could have said something. You know what I'm saying? You, you could have opened your mouth and said something. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I feel like God got a way of humbling you a bit, you know what I mean? Cause like, he got a, and he got a sense of humor. Because not long after that, man, I got hit on at Popeye's. <laughs> and it was by a gay dude. Now, <laughs> now look, before, I don't have no problem with LGBT, all that, you know what I'm saying? Whatever letter represents you, I ain't got no problem with you, okay? Live your life. Do whatever you got to do. But just don't offer me something I ain't asked for. I feel like that's fair. If I ain't asked for it, don't you offer it. <laughs> you keep it to yourself, you understand? <laughs> Now, I went, to, I went to Popeye's, all right? And, I, and you know, I love their chicken. And uh, I like to go through the drive-thru, but this day, this drive-thru long was mad long. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go inside. <laughs> Should've stayed in the car. <laughs> Cause when I, you know, when I, I get out the car and I open the door, all I hear is, ooh, ooh, look at the chocolate coming through the door. Nah, he ain't talking about me. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, mm, and I like him with long hair too. And I said, okay, he might be. He might be talking about me. Now, some would have said, Christian, get back in that car. I wanted that chicken bad. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I had a coupon. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so I get to the register. I ain't trying to make no eye contact. I look down and say, yeah, uh, let me get the three piece dark classic. I'll take the fries and the sweet tea. He looked at me and said, mm, I sure can get that for you. Now, this is what made me nervous, because why are you rocking your hips? Because there wasn't no music playing, you know what I'm saying? I like if he was trying to seduce me, you know what I'm saying? Like, telling me his hips don't lie or something like that. I don't know, you know what I mean? Mm, I sure can. Mm -hmm. Now, you want a three-piece dart. Now, do you want two thighs and a third leg? I said, oh, God, no. <laughs> you can keep that and the chicken, you understand? <laughs> Actually, get that away from the chicken, you understand? <laughs> I play gospel all the way to KFC. You understand what I'm saying? I just, I'm going to get that chicken one way or another. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> John, enjoy yourself, though. I, I'm so grateful. Thank y'all so, so much, man. This means so much to me. So we're here at the Comedy Zone on a Sunday night, and I didn't know if anybody was gonna come out, man, but Charlotte.
we sold out. You did an amazing job. You chose an amazing lineup with Juwan, Tyrone, Trey Pone to see you guys back together. You know how much they mean to me because they just they really have seen the journey from day one to now. And um so I don't wanna cry. Oh that is cool. <laughs> I'm just so proud of you. It's okay. He gonna love. I'm proud of you. This, this is what you. This is what you dreamed of. This is what you wanted. So, I love you. Yeah. Uh -huh.